Welcome to the attic. We are live. <laughs> Today is October 24th of 2021 and you are watching the Piedmont Trails channel. My name is Carol and I want to welcome you all to the live stream. We usually hold these about once a month now and tonight I'm going to be sharing about 50 surnames of families who were living along the James River in Virginia between the years of 1730 and 1745. I will also be sharing um, some resources and records um, from this area, and I'm going to explain a little bit about the history behind it and how these actual lands were settled. I will also be sharing some news from uh, the Great Wagon Road Project. We've made some huge discoveries uh, during the past two weeks, so I'm very excited about that, and I'll, I'll be sharing some news about it. I'll also be sharing some news from Piedmont Trails on the podcast that we've got coming up for um, the remainder of October, and then we've got to get ready to go into November. But um, if you are new to the channel, um, this is the attic of Piedmont Trails. This is where all of the research from for all the projects, all the articles, all the podcasts. This is where all of that work comes together. And, and I, I'm able to get that together from various resources and documents and files and then hopefully share majority of that all with you. Um, but the Great Wagon Road Project, I'm just so excited. I'll have to share some tidbits on that from what we found the past couple of weeks. But if you're new to Piedmont Trails, um, Click, be sure to click um, subscribe or like and, and let us know that you're here. Um, just enjoy, join the journey with us as we travel back to the past. The live chat is up and running. I can see it. And oh, just type in your comments. You can talk amongst each other. Let me know that you're here. I will stop from time to time. Uh, during tonight's segment, and I'll look up and read your comments, and I want to welcome you. Welcome each and every one of you to the live stream. Welcome. As I stated earlier, I'm going to name about 50 surnames from this time period in James River, and I'm going to start off with something that I think every one of you can relate to, and that is that millions of families can trace their lineage to Virginia, and we're finding this true almost daily on a daily basis millions of families as they trace their family history find at some point some of their family members traveled through settled in or lived in Virginia this state is home to of course the first permanent English settlement dating to 1607 and that's of course with the founding of Jamestown records dating over 400 years that's a huge span of time for records but 400 years of records can be found in this area now you'll find out as I go through this segment tonight with all of these notes I've got in front of me you'll find out some of these records are not stored in Virginia today so I'll share my resources with that I'm going to begin with a little small um, history of a very interesting gentleman and his name is Captain Newport. Captain Newport was a sailing captain, and he arrived in Virginia circa 1608. And he was primarily looking for gold. And the other thing he was looking for was the South Sea, or other words, the Pacific Ocean. He didn't find neither of these. He was here in Virginia. He was at Virginia on behalf of London. And the other thing that what he did was able to find was suitable land for settlement. And he was successful with this. Captain Newport was exploring areas all along the James River during this time period of 1608. During, during the first election of the Burgesses, the House of Burgesses was held in 1619. The settlements in this area along the James were known as, and see if you've recognized any of these, Charles City, James City, City, City of Henricus, Martin's Hundred, Argyle's Gift, Lawn's Plantation, Ward's Plantation, and Flower Dew Hundred. How many of you all have heard of those 
settlements. Bear with me, I've got all kinds of notes here. And I've got them all messed up. <laughs> okay. William, and here's another name to remember. William Mayo, um, who was one of the first settlers near the Roanoke. Let me back up here. Here I go. Okay. Let me back up. Virginia's frontier history in association with London begins in 1608 with Captain Newport. The people who were living in 1619 along the James River, they were made up of middle class England. Okay, they were from the middle class. The deal was, is that if a col col um, colonist cleared and settled on 50 acres and agreed to pay the king an annual rent, he might have that much in fee simple. Anyone paying into the treasury equivalent of 12 pounds and 10 shillings would be entitled to 100 acres. And anyone performing a public service would be entitled up to 2,000 acres. In June of 1730, there was a proposal. Now, this is some 20-some years after these families have been living here. There was a proposal from families living in Goochland County who wanted a town to be laid off at Warwick on the south side at the James River. This location was near the falls. But the proposal was rejected, allowing people to settle on the west side of the Great Ridge of the Mountains was also rejected. But people did. And what they're referring to as the Great Ridge is, of course, the Blue Ridge Mountains. But people did settle there. And they went anyway. During this time period, there were many, and I can't specify, and I can't say that enough, there was a huge amount of German families who were migrating and leaving Pennsylvania during this time period. This is um, during the 1730 decade and for early years of 1740. They were primarily settling first in Spotsylvania County. But as more and more of these families migrated south, the eastern and western sections of the mountains were also becoming established. Here's a list of surnames. Here we go. First list. 1730 decade, there were the following surnames were receiving land grants in Goochland County. Okay? That's Alan Howard, Abraham Venable, John Kent, William Mayo, Charles Lynch, Daniel Perk, Thomas Ballow, Robert Adams, Christopher Clark. Nicholas Merriweather, Robert Hughes, Stephen Lacey, Robert Horsley, Joseph Mayo, and William Saul. The William Mayo that I mentioned was the actual surveyor of Goochland County in 1757. By, at that time, he had already surveyed 6,300 acres along the James River. That's a lot. I urge you all to research much more that because I'm not going to elaborate on these this here, but on Robert Beverly and William Beverly, and also on John Connery along the Shenandoah River. If you suspect you have um, family members and ancestors who lived along the Shenandoah River during this time period, I urge you to research those names. I'll repeat them. Robert Beverly. William Beverly and John Connery along the Shenandoah River. Also look into Joseph, um, not Joseph, but Jacob Stover. And also the Van Meter brothers, um, John and Isaac. And I should also mention Hoist Height. Um, someone needs to write a lengthy book about Hoist Height and all of his uh, so many adventures in Virginia. And also Robert McKay. The summer of 1737 witnessed over 100 families to the James River just in that one summer. Who was leading? Some of these arrived by sea, but for the ones that were arriving by land, uh, migrating, was were led mainly by John Hart. And I'm going to spell this for you. It's H-A-R-T, first name John. He was known to lead, uh, lead many families into this area. 
People continued to arrive by both sea and land, which I just said, and many of these people were also indentured servants or slaves. By 1740, settlements began to emerge on smaller waterways connecting to the James River. All of the land lying in the Fork of the James laid outside of Borden's Grant. But now, through the years of researching through Borden's Grant, I urge you to look into where the boundary lines from Borden's Grant extended further west than what they should have. And you're not, there are a couple of survey maps that just quickly came to my mind, but I urge you to dig deeper into that if you're suspecting you're not quite sure if your ancestor was in the Borden grants or not look into it further to make sure because they were known to go outside of their boundaries in order to settle the lands more quickly the council agreed on special privileges such as larger land grants and they could apply for more than one grant if you've looked at the article that I've written just here recently on Piedmont Trails about the early settlers along the James River, I've mentioned, I think it was around 40 to 50 surnames from the 1740 decade that were living right along the James River. But what I didn't mention was the names that were living along the smaller waterways that connected to the James River during the same time frame. There are hundreds of families living in this particular area. There are hundreds. I have got to read you the minutes. Hold on one second. Let me get to my page. Because I've got to share with you the minutes. Bear with me. Sorry. I should have had this page marked. This is the minute stated from November the 3rd of 1740. Um, Council minutes for the following order. And this is pertaining to James River. Upon consideration of the petition of John Smith, Zachary Lewis, William Waller, Robert Green, and Benjamin Waller, leave is granted to them to enter for and survey 100,000 acres of land in that part of Orange County, which will be in the county of Augusta when that county shall take place on the river and branches of Roanoke and the branches of James River. This grant is really different. There's for several reasons why. And that's why I wanted to read the exact minutes from the council because I'm going to go into detail about what makes it so different. First thing is the land is not described. It's not described like your ordinary tracks are described. It doesn't give a detailed description of the land property. And you may hear my little uh, fur babies coming up down the steps. Shelby's coming up to see me now. Number two is no patent could issue for a certain boundary like Beverly Manor or Borden's Grant. Okay. The third thing is another odd thing is that the grant is never mentioned again in the council minutes. Not. It's not ever mentioned again. Fourth thing is there's no record is made of it in the county surveyor's books or in the land office. Except. Each survey that was made for these men was a portion of the 100,000 acres that was allowed for them. And that was all that it was ever mentioned. So when you define the word vague, that's about as vague as one can get. And in, uh, you know, all of the land grants that I have studied, and I started out in North Carolina and studied those with Lord Granville. But when I ran across this years ago, I couldn't believe of how, where were the boundaries and where were the surveys? So who are these men that are mentioned in the council minutes? John Smith. John Smith is the field agent and you will run across him in names of old records and documents pertaining to these land grants many, many times. 
he would actually go out and show the lands to possible buyers. And he would also submit in the paperwork for a survey to be conducted. Okay, so he was always, he actually lived in the area. Zachary Lewis was the another name that was mentioned in the council minutes. He was a lawyer and he was practicing in Spotsylvania County. He is also the son-in-law of Colonel John Waller. Mr. Lewis sold all of his interest in these lands by 1760-1761. William Waller is the son, of course, of Colonel John Waller. He is also a lawyer practicing in Williamsburg. He later becomes a judge during and after the American Revolutionary War. Robert Green arrived in Virginia by 1712 with his uncle, William Duff. And that last name is D-U-F-F. I urge you, if you're interested in learning more about the lands and the early settlements along the James River, look into the last name of Duff, D-U-F-F. Green, his um, nephew, represented Orange County for about three years or two and almost three years from 1736 to 1738. James Patton was born in Ireland and for many years he organized and operated a merchant vessel and, and brought many people from Ireland to Virginia. Um, Patton has a history with William Beverly and he actually lived in Augusta County acting as the county lieutenant and sheriff. And he was the main collector of the revenues. Several books could be written about the life of James Patton, just like as uh, in the life of Hoist Hyatt. Mr. Patton was killed in July um, of 1755 during an attack at Draper's Meadows. The surveys for the first grants are not stored in Orange County. You can only find information from the land grants themselves. I'll repeat that. The surveys for the first grants are not stored in Orange County. You can only find information from the land grants themselves. John Smith, as I mentioned earlier, was the field agent. He was the only one of these men who actually lived right in the, among the um, people who were settling and purchasing these lands. He owned property at the, what they called the Ennis Big Lick, which was now present-day Roanoke, and he was living not far from Looney's uh, Ferry. He was captured during an attack at Boss's Fort, and when he was able to return, he ended up selling his property. He was exempt from all road orders that I have ever been able to find. I've not been able to find him... Um, or any other civic duties during this time. He seemed to be exempt from any, all of this. But I have a personal take on this. I'm thinking that Mr. John Smith was probably permanently injured um, when he was offering support to Colonel William Byrd during a Cherokee expedition that he uh, was actually on. And William Byrd mentions him in his uh, documents that he was with him. So these grants will have the description of um, various different vocabulary that you might be familiar with. One is they'll have the description of long poles, okay? And also when you're really uh, looking into them and you want to map out your ancestors' uh, land grant, you will need to note that on the waterways, the surveys actually measure from one point in the water to another point in the water. Instead of using the regular vocabulary of following the natural course of the river or the water or the branch or the creek. Usually in all of the ones I have been researching, they would always say they would meander with the flow of the water of the creek in which the borders, but not in this area. They will measure one point in the water to another point in the water. The amount of land an individual could apply for depended greatly on his ability to pay. It also depended on timber, the amount of timber on the property, and also springs. That was very valuable. You will note that many of these first grants reside in the valleys below the ridge line. And, when there, and there's a very fascinating reason why for this. And I recently found this out and confirmed it. But a, the reason they were wanting to concentrate on the valleys, first of all, were fertile soil. 
um, the new owners could be able to pay what they were should were allowed to or responsible to pay. They should be able to be able to survive on that property. But also a road connecting these tracks was located up along the ridge lines. Hint, hint, Great Wagon Road. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is great. Okay, let me get back to... Okay. By 1742, now we've gone through the minutes of 1740. Now we're into 1742. Some of the first settlers along the Roanoke are, here's more surnames, John, George Robinson. George Robinson. James Wentfro. Daniel, and I'm going to spell this name. M-A-U-G-H-N-A-H-A-N. Mark Cole. Peter Wentfro, Henry Stiles, John Askins, Brian Cuff, Sim Akers, Tasker Tosh, Samuel Martin, William Bradshaw, Nicholas Horsford, William Craven, James Burt, and William Brand. All right, now I'm now going to mention even more surnames who acquired uh, land grant during 1742, but these are on the smaller waterways that connect into the James River. And I will name the waterways. Uh, John Harrison, this is all from 1742. John Harrison on Looney's Mill Creek. Joseph Lapsley, Lapsley L-A-P-S-L-E-Y, on Woods Creek. Gilbert Campbell on Woods Creek. Samuel and William Wood on Woods Creek. James Young on Whistle Creek. Henry Kirkham, Woods Creek. Robert Looney. We all know. I'm sure. Well, if you don't know who Robert Looney is, he's the owner and operator of Looney's Ferry there. Okay, Beaver Dam Swamp and another grant on Looney's Mill Creek. Reverend John Craig, he is a, another very interesting. Some of these surnames that I'm reading to you, I've already researched into and know some of the things that they shared in developing their settlement. I can name some of them who stayed there for a while and then they left and went somewhere else. Some of these went through to Tennessee. Some ventured further south, North Carolina. But Reverend John Craig, was he settled on Craig's Creek and Patterson Creek. William Armstrong settled on Mill Creek in the Borden's Grant. Okay, 1743. Patrick Hayes on Looney's Mill Creek. Christopher Zimmerman. I'm mentioning this gentleman due to the fact that his entire 400-acre track, the whole thing, 400-acre track was located west of the Blue Ridge. And that's Christopher Zimmerman. Okay, I'm in 1744, David Mitchell on Persimmon Branch. John Mitchell on Brood Spring Branch. 1745, James Trimble on Borden's Creek. There are many, many more entries for this specific area. I have only scratched the surface, just a small portion. Many of these names will also be found on the muster list, if you'll take time out and go through those and so don't forget that as you research um go through other documents and stuff to find out exactly more details about your ancestors another thing is pinpointing the timeline is crucial this is what's helped me going through some of these um grants and document old documents and stuff is if you pinpoint your timeline just as close as you can get it it will greatly help you in conducting your research because without a focused timeline you're going to be searching among the records with the lights off you could you might stumble across it and then you might not so sure you may find something new but think of all the data you would, would discover if you had focused on a specific timeline all right i'm going to share some sources with you now, of course, of course, the, I'm going to share the the council minute records or number one, number one. 
And it's not necessarily going to point you in the direction of your family, but it's going to give you a history of the area. And that, having that history is going to guide you in the direction for the records. Number two thing is going to be the land grant records. Um, number three is going to be chalky, chalk, um, Chalky's Abstracts, and that's volumes two and three. Chalky's Abstracts at volumes two and three. And the last thing is going to be Kegley's Virginia Frontier. Um, if you've never heard of that, that was the book that I was reading from. Let me hold it up and make sure I don't get a glare. You do. Okay. This was um, written by Frederick Kegley. It was first published in 1938. And, oh, fascinating book. Um, he goes into detail. He, he was a very, very passionate historian who really dug deep into the records for Southwest Virginia and into the Roanoke um, area along the James River. And that's a must-have um, for that area. Now, you may have sources, too, um, that you may think that I haven't mentioned tonight. And let me see. Let me read some of the high. Well, okay, we got Scotty says, just found your site and have started listening to your videos. Research my family went down. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I have several family members who traveled down the Great Wagon Road and finding their footsteps is extraordinary. Um, someone asked me the other day, well, how, how can you find out if your ancestor crossed a particular ferry? There are ferry records, believe it or not. There are ferry records, and it's possible that you can find out the exact date of when your ancestor crossed, say, the Potomac River. Um, Brian says, good to have you back. Been missing you. Good to see you, Brian. Thank you for joining me this evening. Summer says, great to see you. Always fascinating. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Scotty says, have you have used chalkies? Yes, I have too. They're great. They're absolutely wonderful. For this section tonight, I used volumes two and three for a lot of my notes for tonight. And of course, I used uh, Kegley's Old Reliable too. But yeah, if you have other sources, share them with each other. Um, talk so much yourself and share them. And, you know, because Virginia has a vast amount of history. And not all of the sources and information are found in one particular county, one area. They are scattered. Um, yes, 400 years of history. It's a lot, a lot. One, uh, don't get discouraged either. I had uh, someone to mention to me, well, I could not ever find my ancestors land grant and it was supposed to be in Orange County. Well, don't be discouraged because just like I said earlier, a lot of these that I mentioned tonight, you're not going to find them in Orange County. You know, so just keep looking. Uh, if you can't find some particular information or data in the first place that you look, just keep looking. It's just, it only means that you looked in the wrong place. That's all that means. <laughs> okay. Um, this past week, the Great Wagon Road Project was able to not only identify the road in Henry County, Virginia, but we were able to see the original road bed. Um, this was fantastic. As soon as I saw it, I was jumping up and down for I don't know how long. Uh, I was probably screaming and everything else. But anyway, it was amazing. Um. We've got a team member from the research team that's up there, and uh, they're doing extraordinary work right now. And um, we, we were able to uncover a large section of the road. Um, it's just amazing. It's just, I, I'm really, I'm just speechless on the length and... I'm just hoping that there is a way with the Great Wagon Road Project that we're going to be able to preserve this for uh, for the future. That would be fantastic. But yes, um, we are also got a Great Wagon Road Project meeting coming up on next month, I think on the 11th. And team members will be getting together and working with all the updates that we've come, gotten all through the summer. And we'll be getting ready to head into winter and start planning all of our expeditions for next year. So we've got a full schedule. And I'll share more updates and possibly some photos too of what we were able to discover 
um, during the next month in November on the Piedmont Trails uh, website. Other news that I've got going on is the next podcast will be uh, coming out this week. And it's all about the Western Roads of Maryland um, during the colonial period. I'm mainly going to be talking about three main roads traveling through Western Maryland and in entering into um, West Virginia and Virginia. So that'll be coming out this week. Okay, and Scott says, uh, Rockingham County, Virginia has old court minutes digitized. Yes, and you're going to find them. Is Just keep looking. Just keep looking. When it comes to Virginia, you'll find records a little bit everywhere. Don't think that you're just going to find certain things and in, because in, historical societies will have things that you would not even think that they would have. Um, I, w- I was going to say something else that just hit my mind. Church organizations, church associations um, will hold a great deal of information. I was going to say Strawberry Association with the Baptist. I think that's in, is that in Virginia? Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. (laughs) Okay. Um, The next live stream will be November the 28th at 730. Um, This is a holiday weekend. It's Thanksgiving. So um, I'm not going to create a presentation so much as it's just going to be a question and answer format. So just bring your questions, bring your answers, anything regarding genealogy and history. It's just going to be a time for us to just get together and we can just talk about random things associated with genealogy and history. We can vent through our our problems of what we're having through our research to each other and maybe we can all help each other (laughs) over the Thanksgiving weekend. (laughs) So It'll be the 28th. It's on a Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Everyone's welcome to attend. Bring your friends and we'll just we'll talk about your journey to the past. It'll be fun, um, but it'll only be fun if you join me. Okay. Let me see if there was anything else that I had left out. If you hear papers rattling, I'm sorry. I think I've gotten everything. I mentioned all my sources I used. I think we're good to go. Okay, well, I think that's it. Thank you all so much for joining me this evening. If you have enjoyed this stream, um, be sure and click the subscribe button and just join the journey with us. We'd love to have you. I wish all of you a great uh, amount of new discoveries for the month of November, and I'll see you Thanksgiving weekend on Sunday, the 28th at 7.30 p.m. Until then. Enjoy your journey to the past and God bless.